Hello and welcome to Politics Tonight, where we dig and go beyond the headlines for informed analysis of major political stories in Nigeria. I am Olajumoke Olatunji. The two days to the March 18 governorship and state assembly elections, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has begun distribution of sensitive materials for the polls across the country. On the interview segment for today, we examine the Aboyin State governorship race with the candidate of the All Progressive Congress ABC Right Honorable Francis Obuna Wifuru as our guest. Welcome to Politics Tonight. Stay with us. We will be right back. Thank you for staying with us. Today to the governorship and elections in Nigeria. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is working to ensure that the exercise is hit free. To this end, INEC has begun distribution of sensitive materials to all its offices and 18 local government areas of Ondo State. Ayo Deji Muradi, your reports. The distribution of sensitive materials by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in Ondo State, commenced amid tight security at the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN office in Akure, the state capital. This was done in the presence of representatives of political parties, journalists, and security agents. The sensitive materials distributed include ballot papers, resource sheets, among others. And those states will be having only as of assembly election with 13 political parties participating in the poll, expecting the materials. INEC Acting Resident Electoral Commissioner in the state, Oyekola Oyelami, expressed readiness of the commission to conduct free and fair poll in the state. Oyelami assured the people that the Bamuda Voter Accreditation System Beavers machines have been configured and working perfectly. We are distributing the ballot papers papers and the resource sheets for House of Assembly election. Beavers have been reconfigured and all the beavers are working perfectly well. Some of the representatives of political parties express satisfaction with inspection of the materials. We inspected the materials, the sensitive ones, and uh, we are fully happy with what we saw. And uh, hopefully, INEC will deliver. They've been transparent so far, and that is um, what we believe they should, they should do. At least we have many political parties there. We have the chairman of IPAC here, and so the major stakeholders, the journalists and everything. So it's been perfect so far. Some residents also express their readiness to be part of the election. As I focus, the election for Saturday will be a peaceful election. The one that is hot has been co completed. Men, the police... Other civil servants and uh, civil defense, I'm expecting them to be non partisan. Ndo is one of the states where governorship election will not hold, but residents of the state want security agencies and the electoral body to be neutral in the discharge of their duties. Ayode Jimora Deyo, TVC News, Akure. Politicians are now making last moves ahead of Saturday governorship and House of Assembly elections across Nigeria. In Taraba State, the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, retired Colonel Agu Kefas, has advised the electorate to vote for competent candidates to unify the state rather than base their decision on sentiment. In a broadcast, Agu promised to unite the people and work with stakeholders to return all displaced people to their homes if elected governor. The PDP flag bearer also said if elected, he would work with local communities rather than taking decisions that would affect millions of people without due consultations. Already, my five finger strategy is my covenant with God and you all, the good people of Taraba State. As you go out on Saturday to cast your vote, I urge you to vote for free and compulsory primary and secondary education, good quality health care delivery, prompt payment of workers' entitlement, 
and improve workers' welfare. Also, industrialization, mechanized agriculture, youth and women empowerment. These are contained in my five-finger mm -hmm. agenda for the state. A vote for PDP on Saturday is a vote for the creation of special economic free zones to woo investors to Taraba. Tourism development to boost revenue. Rural and infrastructure development, especially water, roads, and good transport system. Power and affordable housing for all to give our citizens a better life. With me at the end of affair, Taraba will never be the same again. Moving forward, slogan will be all inclusive. We will tackle the enemies that have befallen us, enemies like poverty, and bring about innovation in agriculture to make our farmers rich. All right, so let's take a short break, and when we return, it will be time to speak with the candidate of the All Progressives Congress ABC in Ebon State, Right Honorable Francis Obuna Wifuru, on the governorship race in the South East State. Please stay with us. In politics tonight, digging beyond the headlines, and now to our interview with the guest of the day. I am now all progressives Congress APC in a boy state. Right, Honorable Francis Obuna Wifuru, who discussed the governorship race in the southeast state. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thank you very much. All right, my uh, name is Wifuru Francis. Hello. Please go ahead. My name is Louis Francis Obonna, the Speaker of the Bonin State House of Assembly, and by the special grace of God, the candidate of all progressive Congress, the gubernatorial candidate of all progressive Congress at Bonin State. All right, once again, welcome to Politics Tonight, and thank you for joining us tonight. Right, congratulations on being the much. standard bearer of your party in the governorship election. Tell me a bit of your background that prepared you for the job of governor. I joined politics very early, as early as 1993, and I started contesting elections to represent my people at the State House of Assembly. First was 2003, by the special grace of God, I couldn't get to the level of primary election. And in 2007, I contested in the People's Democratic Party. I couldn't get a ticket of the People's Democratic Party. I moved to ANPP in 2007, and I contested primary in ANPP in 2007, and uh, I won the primaries of uh, the position for the position of the House of Assembly representing the people of Fiji West State constituency. Uh, unfortunately to me, I couldn't win the election. The People's Democratic Party won the election, and in 2011, I had to go back to my former party, the People's Democratic Party, which I went back in 2008. And in 2011, I contested the same House of Assembly, and I won the election, and uh, won the primary and won the main election. And that is how I went to the House of Assembly in, 2000, in 2011. Our inauguration, the House was proclaimed on the ninth day of June 2011. I became a member of the House the same ninth day of June 2011. Mm -hmm. By the special grace of God, my party nominated me to be the Deputy Chief Whip of the House of Assembly in 2011, the position I held from 2011 to 2015. And in 2015, I contested again 
And uh, by the special grace of God, too, I won the election in the same platform of People's Democratic Party. And I became the speaker in 2015. Since 2015 to date, the same election held again in 2019, which my people... Honorable Wifer, are you there? All right. It's so very much wonderful on my own side. So the grace of God is very enormous, and I am so much happy about that. Then today, I joined this race because I joined the All Progressive Congress. Uh, ninth day at the floor of the House of Assembly of November 2020 when we moved from People's Democratic Party to APC. And um, the APC, having been my party from the admin issue, you know, I told you I was there in, in 2007. Mm -hmm. So I know everything about APC. So I contested the election again under the platform of APC to be the governor of the state. That happened on the 29th day of May, 26th, 28th and 29th day of May. By the special grace of God, I won the primary election of our party, and I contested with five very credible leaders of our DSA that wanted to also become the governor. But the special grace of God and the God's grace is upon me, and that is why I become the candidate of the party. And I am very much happy because the party is seriously on ground here in the only party that is uh, very much known here by every individual in this state. If you go to all the news and cranny of this state, you must uh, see the impact and see the presence of the party, the All Progressive Congress. So. I am happy, and I know as a candidate of All Progressive Congress, uh, we are going to do well on the start of the election because my people have a very good confidence in me that I am going to do well in being their leader and their chief servant. All right. Uh, Honorable Francis, how has campaign been so far? Very crazy. Very, very crazy. I give kudos to the leader of the party in the state today, the governor of Ebony State. The infrastructural development he put in place is already campaigning for me heavily. And uh, with my presence and uh, having been in government, having got a little of experience and knowing fully well what government needs, and that is why in so many occasions you haven't seen me in your station because I had a lot to do and I was in those things that I supposed to do, put things in place, and now I'm coming to your section to tell you what we are doing in a boy. And I uh, have already built a lot of confidence. And the campaign that we did, we did went on very, very well. I stopped campaign, we have started election management. And that is why you see me in the campaign office now. All right, so talking about uh, the governor of the Boyan State, uh, Governor Mai is one of the best governors of his generation in terms of infrastructure development. How does it make you feel? Thank you for that compliment. All right, how does it make you feel seeking to succeed him? Yeah, one, you need to be trust, and one, you need to be competent. With him, having been with him for complete uh, 16 good years, I was in the party with him. He was the party chairman. I was one of the party executives from assistant secretary to ex official of the party. From there, we moved to government. He became the deputy governor. I became a member of the House of Assembly. Fortunately, I became the chief whip at the same point. So now he became the governor by the special grace of God. I am the speaker, his speaker. And we have been working together as friends. And we did so many things together. And we are friends, we understand each other. And we know our duty in this state to, is to legislate for the good governance of our dear people. And we have been doing that because we see that the man is very much supposed to do what is right. And we call him uh, uh, the, the master of intelligence. 
because in everything he do as a governor, he normally send it for house for assembly to get to give him approval. And everything he sends to the house for us to give him approval, we do it according to the constitution. And he always advises us to follow the very much uh, uh, procedure for legislation in everything we do. So I am happy. And I know that that is what convinced him because since we came in, we have never committed any crime, we have never committed any misrule, and our people are very much happy about that. And that is what gives the man confidence that since these people can be able to governize the support of the house, this guy can be able to governize the support of the house and uh, work with the executive. You know, working as a speaker is a very... Uh, a speaker is a very dangerous position because you must uh, uh, work with your members and also work with the executive. And for you to balance the two arm of government, you need to be extra intelligent and you need also to let go. So both parties did a lot of sacrifice, including the executive and the legislators, including even the judiciary in a point, because the governors see everybody as one. If there is anything we want to discuss, he called everybody to come and we we'll sit down and discuss it. He didn't just, there's no time governor get up and approve something without the House of Assembly giving approval. And I tell you this, my governor is the only governor that gives all the approvals that every contractor in this state must get clearance from the House of Assembly before your certificate will be paid. All the certificate that comes from Ministry of Works, if you come to my office, you will see, and if you go to the Chairman House Committee on Works and Transport, you will still see all the certificates in his office. And also the Public Accounts Committee, he gives us free hands to investigate whoever wants to investigate. He never for one day interferes on the matters concerning House of Assembly and any agency or ministry of government. So that makes us to be more independent than the way it is in paper. All right, so I, I like how outspoken you are about uh, your principles. So that takes me to my next question. Uh, Honorable Francis, you've been speaker for seven years now, and from all indication, the zoning permutation favors you, and you appear to be the anointed successor of Governor Umayi. But you also say that you are an independent mind who will not be controlled by the outgoing governor. Help me to understand uh, this very rare situation in a country like Nigeria. Well, let me tell you how one should live his life. You must be truthful to whoever you are working with, and the consistency is what pays. I've been very consistent in every decision I take, and uh, I do tell the governor the truth. And I tell everybody that, look, I am a very independent person, and the governor knows that. And I tell the Boyans that since you know me from Abin issue, there is no way I will allow anybody to control my decision in office. The governor is my governor today, and even if he leaves office, he's my governor. And I respect him for being my friend, for being my governor, for making me proud, for making Ebonyan proud. Everybody is very much proud of Ebony State today. You can't come to Ebony without having one or two things to say that is good about Ebony. If you come to this state now, you, I know you will start blaming your own people. Why are you not doing the same thing the governor of Ebony is doing? We have small resources here, very mega, but the governor utilizes it very effectively with the support of the House of Assembly. So if governor, after working as a governor, and leave office, and one thing that once you leave office, you start controlling another governor, it's not possible. It's not possible. You never control me as a state assembly speaker. And he never asked me to do something that is against the law as a state assembly speaker. In fact, my governor has never admitted anything to me and asked me to treat that thing. He never. He normally calls for a meeting and say, look, this is what I think is good. Can everybody suggest and make a, a very good submission that will help to give our people a good governance? And we do do that. If you call my chief judge, you will still tell you the same thing. My governor don't interfere in any affair of the state assembly. So I don't see him after uh, uh, finishing his tenure as governor, coming back to decide what I do in office as a speaker. I don't see that happening because I'm a very independent person and I know I am very much competent to do this job. I have the capacity to do it, but I need 
the advice of the of my Oga, my governor. I call him my Oga at all times. I don't miss what he's saying that because he has helped me in so many things and uh, he has educated me in so many things. And, but that respect doesn't mean that I fear him. Fantastic. Uh, but can we really uh, describe Eboin State as an APC state, given the big strides of the Labour Party, which won uh, the presidential election? Well, um, Obi issue uh, was a very uh, uh, a, a unknown movement to us. We were not aware that that movement is coming. If we had been much uh, aware about that, we would have prepared for it. And uh, it was a very surprising thing that came. But uh, we, you should know that the one is APC state. If not, there is no way APC will have uh, three, senators, three, three senators elect in a bony. The three senators zone here are all represented by APC today. You speak chairman that is also a former commissioner for Capital City. is also from APC. He, he represents, he's the one representing me. By, I think by 10th day of uh, June, they will be inaugurated once the House, uh, once the National Assembly is being proclaimed. And that of the Central Engineer Kennedy is also from APC. So uh, you can see that APC wins the three senatorial zone here for the senators and also won the three House of Reps and the PDP won one, Labour Party won. So if here is the Labour Party, you, you would have seen Labour Party winning more positions except that of Mr. President. So the presidential election, you can't use it to judge what is happening here. You can use the senatorial election to judge because all the National Assembly elections, APC cruise on with victory. And I'm very much confident because if you see the result, you know that here is APC state. All right. Uh, your state is among uh, the 28 states where governorship election will hold on Saturday. How is APC gearing up for uh, the battle ahead? We are much prepared than any other political party here in the state. And that's why you see my opponents always being on the stations, uh, castigating the government and also the governor. And I say, look, this position you are starting to, uh, to, to win, you are castigating the person that is sitting there. And that, that person made that position attract you. And they are not happy that that person is sitting there. Hey, I don't think you are ready to occupy that position. But it's a PC state. My party is well prepared to take over the, the government house. It's our government house. And we are relaxed. You can see that I'm not bothered. I'm relaxed very much. And I'm happy that my, my governor, uh, with the infrastructure development and a lot of human capital development he did, is already speaking volume for my party. And if anybody tells you otherwise, then wait and see what will be the result on Saturday. You can see that all the stakeholders in this state are already working for my uh, election on Saturday. That shows that we are the candidates of it and we must win by the special grace of God. All right. Uh, Honorable Francis, on Saturday, we will see our 14 candidates battle for the governorship seat. How do you rate your chances among them? Well... Many people are candidates just to uh, campaign. Many are campaigning. Many are not campaigning. So 14 of them. Uh, today, I must tell you that the AA candidates and all his House of Assembly uh, candidates all joined APC here in Eboy. And the candidate is, was popular. And there is a known candidate. He was a commissioner for works here during Chief Martin Elechi. Also adopted me as their candidate because they don't have gubernatorial candidates here in Ebony. They adopted me again today. They have all their members to vote for me. That I am the candidate that they think can do what they want, and uh, I am the candidate they know that can win the election. And uh, I pack also adopted me today as their own candidate. The NLC did the same because you know Labour. Uh, are working with NLC and the TUC. They also, uh, all of them were part of those that adopted me as their candidate. Uh, we don't need to make noise on this. The result on Saturday will speak volume. And you know that the boy is APC state.
I know you'll be happy. All right. Uh, yes, your party recorded some success, but uh, under Francis, the election in a Boeing state. For you, what are the factors responsible? Well, um, the, the, the factors I know, uh, as a Christian, I know that the Reverend Fathers uh, took us on our way. The bishops, the Reverend Fathers, and the many people went down to the villages and started telling our people how to cast the food. Uh, and when our people tried to resist them, they now told them to cast the, they should vote for a candidate of their choice for the National Assembly and vote for B for the president. That, that is what they want. Their only interest alone is for B to win the presidential election. And uh, we didn't know. We didn't get that information on time because nobody told us any time we call for a meeting that our candidate, uh, uh, Bola Ahmed Chinobu, is the best option for us here in Southeast and for us here in Eboin. Reason is that if you vote for Bola Ahmed Chinobu and you, he wins your state, you will have a say. You can't go to somebody that you didn't vote for and ask for something. And I know very well that my party is going to win presidential election. I was very much convinced, and that is why the result didn't shock me. Because I know, no matter what anybody do, human beings are not God. It's only God that gives power. And he gives it to whoever he wants to give it. And I am convinced that God will give it to Tinubu. And when God gave it to Tinubu, I wasn't shocked about that. I know he's going to do that. Reverend Francis, was that the only factor responsible? That is the only factor. It's not that the party is not on ground. APT is very much on ground here in the boy. The only factor is that uh, change the style of the electorate. And when the electorate wanted to reject that they are this they say, look, vote for a presidential candidate only. We have only one presidential candidate. The National Assembly votes for candidates of your choice. That's why you see AP to winning and uh, AP is also losing presidential election here in Ebony. My governor did everything within his reach to know if he can convince them. Because if we get the information on time, we would have find another solution. We would have known what to tell our people. But that didn't get to our ear. So uh, we don't want to, nobody wants to kill himself for what you cannot change. All right, so if this is such a huge factor, how confident are you that the APC will triumph uh, this time? Yeah, because our people, you see, the candidates from Ebony, they all won the elections from our party. I told you earlier that we have to select here. All of them are APC. We have six house of reps in Ebony. And with the, the five concluded, three is of APC. One is PDP and one is Labour Party. With that none, which party is on ground? Is it not APC? All right, uh, Honorable Francis Ogbona Wifuru, we still have a lot to discuss tonight, but before then, let's go for a quick break and I will be right back. Please stay with us. Welcome back to the second lap of the program, and I still have with me the candidates of the All Progressives Congress in Ebony State. State. All right, I once accused the security agents of colluding with some parties in the February 25 uh, presidential election. What are you doing to ensure a level playing field and ensure you're not cheated on Saturday? Let me thank you very much for that security issue. It has been a very bad uh, issue for us as a party because what happened on the day of the 25th day of February was a very surprise to, me, to us as a party. But we have just adjusted our belt. Uh, uh, when you have a challenge, what makes you a man is the ability to uh, handle it and handle it effectively. Now I know very well that the security agency have just understand what they're supposed to do. The CP just came in nearly then. He was just three days old in a bunny. A day old, step because he came to he allow everybody to go out and start doing whatever thing they want to do. And that is what caused that fracas that he saw. 
But I know now that the CP has mastered the ground and he knows what is the right thing to do. I think he's doing very good. But if any political party is complaining, me, I'm not complaining because I'm on ground. I never complain and I will not complain because I'm on ground. I say everybody should come out and vote. Cast your vote to a candidate of your choice. And uh, you will see that uh, if freedom is given to everybody and free and fair elections happen, I'm going to tie off and I'm very much confident about that. All right, so let's briefly talk about uh, your running mates. Uh, there are reports that Patricia Obile stepped down for Austin Omari, the younger brother of Governor Omari. Uh, tell us what the true position of issues are on this matter. That is a very known fallacious statement. How can Patricia Obila step down for Austin Omahe at the tail end? Austin Omahe have never shown interest of being a deputy governorship candidate. Austin contested to be a senator and uh, he won the election and he stepped down for my governor when my governor couldn't win the presidential election. And uh, Austin since that day has been the director general of our divine minded consolidation and continuity campaign organization. He's not interested in becoming the deputy governor of a point state. If he's interested, he would have raised that earlier. And he never raised such issue. And that thing never for one day occurred to anybody's mind. The people are trying to know if they can with sentiment from the public that the APC is trying to do something that is very unjust. Without knowing that we are more proactive than them, there is no allegation they bring that we cannot sort out effectively. Uh, there is never a time anybody asks Patricia to step down. And there's never a town, and I'm sure Patricia, I'm sure, because Patricia is in, his local, in her local government campaigning. She was in EDA, a local government after it's done. Then now she's in her local government uh, doing uh, finishing touches to get people uh, to vote for her party. So nobody knows about this. We started seeing it on social media. And that is why I say, look, this uh, uh, social media one day will cause crisis for this country. We need to curb what people send to social media and we need to discuss it. Because if you go to a very much developed country, this kind of uh, unfounded story are not allowed. And if you send it, you go in for it. All right, thank you for clarifying that part. But, but then what informed uh, your decision, uh, your running mate, and of course, what value does it bring uh, to your candidacy? Well, um, you know, women are asking for 35%. And my governor is a very much known gender-friendly governor. And uh, Patricia is from her, his zone. And when he discussed with the stakeholders, and he said, look, we have men. We have a good man now as, a, as a, a, a candidate of our party. For women participation, we must now give women chance to nominate whoever they want. And that is why nobody contributed in nominating Patricia. That opportunity uh, was given to uh, the women of a Bonnie state. All the uh, uh, known groups and uh, all the uh, women groups came together and uh, nominated Patricia for me. And I didn't have anything against her. And uh, it brought a lot of value because now the women are confident that they are being recognized. And this is the only person that has recognized them. Is part of my strength. I have Patricia as my deputy, and she's a very nice woman. Very, very nice woman. She's a very nice woman. Very calm, very educated, very interesting to stay with. If you stay with Patricia now and listen to her, I know you like her very well. Mm. She's very, very much calm, and I like that very well. That's great. All right, but uh, people like uh, former Senate President, Senator Pais, I am, have stressed that it is the turn of a boy north to produce the next governor of the state. As a candidate from the zone, how do you think this will boost your chances of winning the election on Saturday? Uh, the distinguished Senator, I am, Pais, I am, is a big name here in Ebony and is a known politician. Uh, his decision is right. Is the uh, truly is the turn of a boy not? And uh, the, we have so many candidates in a boy not. The ability of those candidates, he found out that everybody is qualified, very much known, and um, 
but the most qualified person and the person that the state can trust is the speaker. And that is why he didn't look at the difference between his party and my party. But he said the only person that can stand the gap and the only person that can uh, win and will have peace in our state is the speaker. And that is why today he openly announced that speaker is his candidate and that is the candidate he wants his people to vote for. Because this is the only candidate that can bring peace to our state and this is the only candidate that can work for our state. And these are the candidates that, that have gathered experience, that have been in the system and understand the system very well. You can't bring an intruder to come and take over your home. There is no way you allow a man to come and take over uh, the home and chase the owner of the house away. So, any made a choice. It's not only person in this journey. I told you earlier that the Labour Party, the state executive and all the local governments and what the executive adopted me today, with the National Assembly candidates, and including the one that won, the National Assembly uh, member-elect, and all the House of Assembly candidates, they all came out in mass and said, look, the only candidate we know that we trust, that can work for us, that can give the state peace, that can work for this state, that can bring unity, that can solidify the infrastructure put in place, that can uh, cooperate with everybody, is the speaker. Because we trust him, we know him, he has been working, and we've seen his antecedents. And it is something, it's somebody that we cannot go out and start saying we don't know. We know his character, we know his content, we know what he can do and what he cannot do. All right. In that regard, uh, you've been Speaker of the State Assembly for about seven years, and you must be very aware of the problems confronting Ebony State. Now, tell me, what will be your top five priority areas if elected governor? Education, health, agriculture, basically human capital development, easy of doing business. These are the five cardinal things that I think I'm going to consolidate. Because that is why I call my campaign uh, consolidation and continuity, divine mandate consolidation and continuity. Because in education, it's not where we are now that we were when we came in in 2015. Uh, uh, now we're in third position and before we, uh, we joined the government in 2015, or before we took over in 2015, we were about number 20-something. And today we're in number 10. And I think if I become the governor, a lot of things will, will be put in place. And um, even research centers will be created in all our social institutions. And I know a lot of changes will happen because I schooled here in a point. And I understand the problem of our institution here. And everybody knows that. I have the capacity to handle all those problems that is already there. All right, Honorable Francis, would you... Then when it comes to the area of health, okay. when it comes to the area of health, you know, I said it yesterday, that uh, here in Abakaliki, we have a federal teaching hospital. But this federal teaching hospital is not giving us what we need. And we need a functional hospital here in Ebony. We build one of the best hospital by this administration. This administration built one of the best hospitals at Chibru. But from here to Obu is about 55 minutes, one hour drive. And uh, if one is sick or if there's a very big emergency, you can't take somebody from here to Obu. So we need a one functional hospital here in Abakalik. I said number first, the first thing I do is to start building the hospital. There's a building we have here. I say that building, we will put it on integrity test. If the building passed the integrity test, then we we'll convert it to a hospital because the building has not been completed. But we can complete it if it passed the integrity test. And we we'll start a functional uh, state teaching hospital here in Abakaliki. And we we'll make it a very functional hospital that will give people health. And uh, in the area of agriculture, I say, look, we'll do more practical agriculture because all this uh, uh, theoretical agriculture that people do uh, go to Abuja. You get money from the state government, you get from the federal government, you say you want to go and start building uh, a farm. At the end of the day, you will not see any functional farm going on. Even the state here, we have been giving a lot of money as a support to farmers. But all this money end up in the hands of those that are not farmers. So I say we'll do more of practical agriculture this time around. And uh, we have people very good. Uh, China is developed today, not because of their uh, 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 capacity. They developed because they know their trouble and they started 
they started handling it, and they are handling it very well. And that is why they are making use of their population. Here in Ebony, we, the industry we have, the pipe uh, industry that we have, is not all that functioning, because we don't have people that manage it. But if you give uh, business people opportunity, and specialist opportunity, if you get, if you get professionals to come and uh, take over that place, they will handle it with you. And I say, look, we'll give much, much enable environment for business. Yes, we have uh, uh, built uh, uh, a, lot, a lot of uh, support for our businessmen here in Ebony today. For instance, Ebony states have what they call concession uh, law. If you are doing business here and business is using profit, the states will have a, a power to write off tax for you so that it will be like a free, a free trade zone. And uh, it's already going on. There's a law for that in Ebony. Because I heard somebody this morning say, Ebony is the hardest place for one to do business. But these are the people that are contesting election and they don't have one plot of land here in Abakaliki. They have never lived in this Abakaliki. They have never slept in this Abakaliki. They came in from Lagos to contest for governor of Ebony. And they are speaking for us. And what they are speaking, what they are saying is not the truth. And that's why people are not listening to that. Because... <laughs> It is a very much unfounded story that they are telling the public. And it's, it's a complete lie. And nobody wants to listen to that. So I know very well that if opportunity is given to us, we we'll utilize that opportunity since there is a law already in place. So I only say in place of it. I say, look, many of our youth are seeking for jobs today. Not because there is no job. It's because opportunities are not given to them. There's a lot of jobs, but... These jobs are not the job they can do. It's not their profession. And many graduate and they are looking for jobs. And I say, look, we'll start from giving somebody admission. If one is looking for admission now, we'll look at the area of need and know what the state needs. And say, look, the university to give you admission to study this course. Because in the next five years, we need graduates of this uh, discipline. And it's not good for you to go to university and start reading English language. It's just a program. And if you are speaking English fluently, you cannot put food on your table. But if you, if you do a very good course in science that can produce something, a state can help you to uh, give you a noble environment and also help you financially for you, then that is the kind of human capital uh, 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 development that I need. And that is the kind I would do. Not to come and start giving people money. No. You just establish business according to your perfection. That is what I can do. And then give you the uh, opportunity to not exercise your right and exercise your power and show that you have the intellectual capacity to prove us wrong that what you study in the university, you can practice it. These are the things that governments ought to do, and that is what I say I will do. And that is the only thing I believe in easy of doing business, and that is also what I believe in human capital development. Give people the enable environment, allow them to do what they want to do, let them generate the resources first before you start taxing them. Uh, uh, great ideas. Uh, but Honorable Francis, let me take you up um, on health, uh, but a very crucial unit of that sector. I know there have been a few community participatory interventions concerning maternal and child health care. But if elected, what are those policies you're bringing on to improve that very crucial unit? Well, um, it is a very important unit in the area of health. But when you look at our uh, maternal and the child health care development uh, law in a boy state, you will be very marvel because every change needed is very much accommodated in that law. And we say clearly, and we're already doing it in a boy. That is why we have the uh, agency for welfare, religious and welfare matters here in a boy. If you go to hospital here in Ebony, we have a, a reverend father who is in charge that goes to hospital to sit many people that give birth in the hospital uh, and pay their fees and uh, do everything that they need and uh, give them what they need and they'll go to home free of charge. Sometimes you pay one million, sometimes you pay more than that in the hospital. There's an allocation for that from the state government and that is why we created, the state created that agency. And it's working very much effectively. And it's part of implementing the maternal and the child health care development law that is already 
in place in Ebony. When you look at our violence against persons law, VAT law in Ebony, it protects women very much. And uh, even us that uh, made this law, it got a point before that law passed for reading. It was a very big war because men was like, these people want to cage us. And if we give them this kind of right, uh, we're going to be in trouble. But remember, we needed to do it because that is what the women need. And I told you that my governor is a very known uh, a, a man that likes to accommodate women very well. He's a very much gender friendly. And everybody in this state knows very well. If you see him anytime he's talking, there's no way my governor will measure two commissioners without measuring a female commissioner that is doing very well. And we are very much black with the kind of women we have here in Ebony. Very much hardworking women, and they are doing exceedingly very well, more than ever expected. All right. Uh, we, INEC uh, postponed the governorship election by a week. What has been the impact of this on your preparations? Well, for us here, we are prepared 24 hours. Even the election, if it had happened on the 11th, uh, we would have been happy because we know we are cruising home with great strength. And uh, on the 18th, is also good. I next uh, postponement happened because of some other logistics issues. And they have sorted this out. They said they want to reconfigure the machine. It's a necessity. And it needed to happen. Because if that didn't happen, a lot of issues would have come up. And uh, it would have caused a lot of crisis. And uh, people would have said that INEC have failed. It's like what we are hearing today. When INEC announced the results that threw away so many politicians, but a lot of people still say that INEC rig election. And I don't know how people think INEC can rig election. Because I don't see where you rig election. Uh, is it the way it happened here in the point that everybody was fighting to survive? How do you rig the election? So instead of people to accept the outcome of the results and be happy, but I like what Peter B said. I said it's challenging the procedure. It's not challenging the person they declare. It's not challenging the results they declare. And I'm happy for that. Because uh, sometimes we say what we don't know. If you say that INEC can rig the election, like what uh, somebody said, the PDP uh, DG said yesterday, that there's a preparation and is, uh, is already perfected that INEC will rig the election in the point. I said to him, the last election, what number of votes did you get in your pulling in it? You lost your pulling in it, and you lost everything in your, in your local government. Your party PDP couldn't get of the total vote cast in your local government. And you have the temerity to go to the social media and also come to a station of the, the national television to say to the world that an ECA regulation. If you know how to regulation, you can convince your people to vote for you. That's the only way I know you can regulation. If people didn't vote for you, it's impossible for you to regulation. So I give kudos to INEC. And this is the first time, as early as 7 o'clock, all the INEC staff are already at the polling units waiting for the electorate to come. This is the first time that thing happened. And everybody was surprised. There's nothing that you can say that INEC didn't prepare very well. Here in the body, nothing. Absolutely nothing. The machine worked very effectively, well, and everybody were very happy. The machine made the accreditation more easier than even the card reader. So what else do you, how can you blame INEC? I give INEC 100% uh, uh, excellent in all the deeds in our own government in the state. And I don't see that, I don't see any way I can blame INEC. But you know, human beings are, are very much um, undefined. One can get up and say what you don't know. And uh, you can introduce litigation. And that is why you see litigation going on. When people are supposed to use congratulations to welcome the new development, they are using litigation to tell Nigerians that they are not intelligent. If you know that Nigerians are intelligent and uh, what you seek for, well, is not your turn now, you can congratulate the winner and then forge ahead. It, that is what it's supposed to be. And I'm happy that I am in the bylaws now. If, if somebody wins me in this election, you will not see me in court. I will just congratulate the person. And move my and move and move on because that is what I'm supposed to do. All right, Honorable Francis. On a final note, uh, what's your parting message to the voters in Ebony State as the election approaches? I want Ebony State to vote for me. Voting for me is voting for justice. Is voting for capacity. Is voting for competency. Is voting for transparency. Is voting for good leadership. Is voting for good governance. Voting for me also is a vote for development. 
we we move from the growth to progressive stage, from progressive stage to success stage before the end of our tenure. This three stage of life will get to the apex of it. And once we get to the zenith of it, everybody will be proud of Ebony. I am very much happy and I congratulate the good people of Ebony State and I urge you to go out very early in the morning on uh, that fateful day of 18th day of March and vote for me. Vote for me because I am the best candidate I know. By the special grace of God, I am the best candidate. I am the person you know. I am not a new person in this business. Been in this business with you, you know my You know what I can do. You know I am the one that has the capacity to work for you, to serve you, and serve you effectively. Fantastic. All right, I've been speaking with the governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC in Eboyne State, Right Honorable Francis Ogbona Wifuru. We've looked into the governorship race in the South East State. And I must thank you for coming on Politics Tonight to share your vision, mission, and agenda for the people of Eboyne State. Thank you very much for coming thank tonight. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for watching. That marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. But the conversation continues from here. Get in touch with us on Twitter at TVC News NG and at Olajumoke using the hashtag Politics Tonight. We are also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. Join us for the repeat episode at midnight and tomorrow for another Politics Tonight. Dig and beyond the headlines. I am Olajumoke Olatuji. Goodbye. Want to become something become a child again why be a patient if you must worry then worry about winning why worry about germs when you come home bring tales and stories why bring in germs shield your families from germs when detox is a part of every household bucket then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness causing germs everyday use of detox keeps my loved ones protected Inchy, greasy, and smelly braids can be a thing of the past. Inchy Juicy, the new braids from Expression. Made with 100% Aquatex fiber from Canicolon. The new Rua braids from Expression is extremely fast drying and perfect for friction-free washing. Stay dry this season with the new Rua braids from Expression. Now available in pre-stretch and regular braid variants and in beauty shops near you. Every major news story is with many perspective and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time did the, the news first was breaking news? Martin Luther King Jr. was born in Atlanta, Georgia, January 15, 1929. The son of a Baptist minister, King received a doctorate degree in theology and in 1955 helped organize the first major protest of the African-American civil rights movement, the successful Montgomery Boss Boycott. King participated in and led marches for the right to vote, desegregation, labor rights and other civil rights. He advocated civil disobedience and nonviolent opposition against segregation in the South, influenced by Mahatma Gandhi. The peaceful protests he led throughout the American South were often met with violence. Nonetheless, Dr. King and his supporters were persistent and the movement gained momentum. Dr. King was a powerful orator. He appealed to Christian and American ideals and won growing support from the federal government and northern white. In 1963, Bayard Rustin and A. Philip Randolph massive march on Washington for jobs and freedom. The event's grand finale was King's famous I Have a Dream speech. 250,000 people gathered outside the Lincoln Memorial to hear the staring speech. In 1964, the civil rights movement achieved two of